Hi there guys, there's not going to be a jam this week, I just thought I'd give you some back-to-back -back examples of different drive pedals with the Marshall SV20. Uh, this is the primary reason I bought this amplifier, I've been looking for a rig where I could just rock up with one drive pedal and uh, plug it in and have at it, and not to have to stack because you get into uh, pedal tap dancing or switching issues with that. Uh, but this amp seems to handle drive pedals really well, uh, particularly on the normal channel, although I will give you examples of the two channels jumped together and uh, just the bright channel by itself as well. This is every drive pedal I currently have access to, uh, including the J-Rocket Archer, which I'm gonna start this with. So with each of these examples, I'm going to give you a reference tone first. The reason for that is that there's going to be a different starting point for each pedal. This is the way that I work. I tend to turn the pedal on that I'm going to play lead through, and then I'll EQ the amp to suit that pedal. I know that's probably not the conventional wisdom. A lot of people will set the amp to be a fairly flat starting point and then engage the pedal. Uh, for me, I always do it the other way around. I start with my lead sound, and I'm willing to compromise a little bit for my rhythm sound. Uh, so this next example is with the Sir Riot. I'm into the normal channel of the uh, uh, SV20 and I'm in the vintage mode of the, uh, the Sir Riot, so the, the leftmost position of the three-way switch. And this is a Marshall into a Marshall, so you would think that's a bit, uh, bit of a dumb thing to do, but that's actually going to be the same for the next example as well. Uh, but I, I really like this sound. It's a little darker, but definitely something that I could get on within a gig. The next example is the EP booster, so it's just a straight up boost pedal, there's no gain from it. Uh, so in this instance I've jumped the two channels together on the SV20, and I was sort of thinking Allman Brothers, uh, not exactly Allman Brothers, but kind of that flavour. And So for the reference tone I actually backed the volume off on the guitar a little bit because I feel that's what you would do for a clean sound in a gig, and then I kicked in the EP booster for a, a pretty healthy level of drive. I feel like it's probably a little fizzier than Dwayne was getting. Uh, but you've also got to figure that things were recorded very differently back in the 1970s and the late 60s. Uh, things were invariably darker, and that might have been preamps on the desks, or it might have been the type of microphone they were using. Um, but it's, it's in that ballpark, I think. <laughs> So this next pedal is the Analog Alien Rumble Seat, which is uh, billed as being a rockabilly pedal, but actually models an SLP, uh, which is a, a sort of an odd choice for rockabilly, in, in my opinion. Um, but I think it does a good job of it. It actually gets quite close to the gain of this amp when you, uh, when you jump the channels together. It's not dissimilar to the gain from this pedal. 
so uh, yeah, you've got a, a Marshall in a box going into a, an SLP style amp. <laughs> So now we're getting around to my own pedals, the things that I would actually go out and gig. And this is the, uh, the Fly Rig by Tech 21. So for this, I'm into the normal channel. Uh, I've set it fairly flat, uh, a little bit boxy sounding because I feel like it sounds, uh, sounds good with the Fly Rig. I've also engaged the Sounds Amp when I've engaged the OMG pedal. The, the OMG by itself is quite fizzy and the Sounds Amp goes a long way to uh, smoothing that out. Uh, so you wouldn't actually have access to the reference tone here. Uh, in a live environment, you'd have to turn off the sounds out by uh, getting down to the floor and pressing a button. Um, so you know, if you were playing clean in a live environment with a fly rig, you'd have to leave the sounds amp on and back the volume off. But I wanted you to hear how I'd set the amp before I engaged the pedal. Uh, I like this one. This is probably the most outside sounding of the examples. This is my own pedal and what I would consider to be my tone. Uh, this is the Barber Small Fry Burn Unit. This is currently, having sold the Archer now, uh, my only drive pedal other than the last example, which you'll hear in just a second. Uh, but this is just into the normal channel, pretty damn flat with the EQ actually. It's not really doing anything at all and that's kind of how I'm running it live. Um, very consistent result with this rig. And so for the last example, I have the Bellcat Fuzz by Gear for Music. These things are about 17 quid. I did a video about this pedal many years ago. Um, I think it holds up. It's, uh, it's, a, it's a pretty decent fuzz. Wouldn't say it was one type of fuzz or another. It's a little bit, uh, bit of its own thing, um, but a nice sound and it feels great to play on. I still haven't gigged it. Uh, there's no reference tone here because it's exactly the same as the last example. <laughs> Thanks for watching guys, I hope you dug the video. I couldn't find anything on YouTube where anybody used the Marshall SV20 specifically as a pedal platform and uh, I thought if you were looking to buy this amplifier you'd want to know whether it would work with a selection of drives. So hopefully you found that useful. I'll see you again. Later.